Well, I need to talk about my uh, book, Anarchism and the Black Revolution. Um, the original Anarchism and the Black Revolution came out in 1979 while I was a prisoner at uh, Marion Federal Prison, uh, which is one of the most infamous uh, prisons in the United States and at that time. And, and ever since, has been holding people who are called political prisoners in the United States, people who've been uh, arrested for, at that time, uh, part of the Black Liberation Army or the Black Panther Party or, or other types of organizations, revolutionary organizations uh, all over the country. And I was thrown into a so-called control unit, as they call it, which is uh, not just a uh, solitary confinement cell, but actually it's a solitary confinement cell plus a torture chamber and uh, a high-tech court torture chamber at that. And I was thrown into that for some years. And, and in fact, spent nine years in all of my 15 years in prison. Nine years uh, was spent in, in various times of solitary confinement in prisons all over the uh, country. And um, so I wrote this book. And this book was meant to be a, um, a revolutionary uh, pamphlet. That's what it was at first, a pamphlet size. And uh, it was meant to raise some ideas about um, you know new political theories, new political, sh new revolutionary strategies, new ideas about grassroots organizing, a critique of the existing um, you know black movement of the at that time of the 1970s, the late 1970s and early 1980s. That was a time when black power was dying out, or you know, or had died out, and you uh, pretty much had. Uh, you know, the, the whole model of the electoral politics and the black preacher, politician, and all this stuff that we're familiar with today. And so I had uh, written that as a critique of all of that uh, and also to talk about, as I said, new politics, new direction, and, uh, and new ways of fighting back. And uh, it actually became a uh, so-called bestseller. I, I've, I've sold personally uh, 10,000 copies of this thing uh, in various forms uh, over the years, uh, over the, you know, since 1979, and uh, this is the third third version of it. Actually, uh, the the first version is in '79 as a pamphlet. Second version was the first book size. It was much smaller than this, about a third of the size of this book. This is over 200 pages. I think that one was like uh, between 90, 94 and 110 pages, something like that the one in 94. And then uh, this one came out just, uh, well, just came out this year. In fact, uh, just a uh, couple of weeks ago it came out. And uh, it was printed by a company in um, Denver, Colorado, P&L Press. And um, what makes this book uh, a good read, a fascinating read, above other books, you know, on the black struggle and so forth, is it raises uh, the whole idea of the revolutionary struggle should come directly from the people and from the grassroots. It shouldn't come from the, uh, the so-called uh, intelligentsia, the black intelligentsia. It shouldn't come from the black preachers and, and the other soft uh, uh, classes that are ready to negotiate rather than to struggle, to fight in the streets. Uh, it should come from the gangbangers. It should come from the welfare mothers. It should come from all those people who are locked out of this system who have no voice in this system and who, who will never be free under this system. These are the forces for revolution. And this is what we talk about in here. We talk about uh, a program called Let's Organize the Hood, which is now the uh, main program for the um, Black Autonomy Federation. Let's Organize the Hood is a grassroots revolutionary organizing program where we deal with uh, the conditions of oppression, but we also point our, our guns or our, our um, um, criticism toward the government because it's the government that has created the conditions of oppression. It isn't just white folks individually. Uh, it isn't just the Ku Klux Klan or, or some other uh, uh, marginal at this point, uh, you know, revolutionary uh, uh, racist movement, I should say, uh, racist threat. It is the government. The government employs the cops. The government protects the Klan and lets the Klan do all the stuff that they did. When the Klan was here in Memphis, uh, in March, you had uh, 500 cops out there to protect the government, uh, uh, to protect the Klan's rights. A so-called black government out protecting the Ku Klux Klan's rights. So we talk about all this stuff and we expose all this stuff. And I started talking about this in this book 
back in 1979. And, it, and you know, of course, the criticisms and the critique and the, the plans for struggle have sharpened since that time. And, you know, a lot of things are in here now that wasn't there then uh, because, you know, I, I've grown and seen things and, and lived through things myself and been able to report on it. So this, this is a, uh, an important book for that reason, you know. Uh, no book is going to set you free. No book is a real manual for any revolutionary struggle, but this is the closest thing to it because it gives you a point of view and a perspective that you never would have otherwise. It talks about, the prison. It talks about for instance, the, uh, the, the mass imprisonment. It talks about, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the prison system and how the prison system, the mass prison system, where so many black people are, are in prison right now. It talks about all these things so that uh, people can get a framework and an understanding in one place and then say, well, you know what, we can fight this. Because most people say, well, okay, so you told me this, so I've got this information, but what, do I, what am I going to do with it? I can't do anything with it. So we tell you, you say, yeah, you can do something with it in your community. You can start organizing a movement to fight it. You can start, because in every state in the union, there's a, a mass prison uh, institution. You know, in every state in the union, the federal government has given millions of dollars to, uh, you know, prisons to put black people, to put uh, other peoples of color in. Uh, they'll take, they're taking money from hospitals. They're taking money from schools. They're taking money from all social programs to put them into the prison system. And so we need to fight that. This is not hard to figure out. We need to fight this. It's like somebody coming and robbing you on the street. Every time you walk outside, you know somebody sticking their hand in your pocket, taking your money. You know what I'm saying? You know you got to fight it. You can't let somebody bully you like that. So the government's doing it. The government's doing it right now. They're bullying people. They're bullying us in the black community, and they're taking money that should go into uh, the betterment of society, and they're taking that money to start wars. They're taking that money to, to pay police to beat and kill us in the streets. They're taking that money to hire more prison guards and to be a more present. So we have to understand that we have to fight. So that's what this book is about. It is a uh, manual for revolutionary fight back. That's what it is. It's born of any other word, any name. It's a manual for revolutionary fight back by black revolutionaries. That's what it's about. And so it's a real important book. Some people have stolen it and renamed it and so forth. Well, you know, you got, that's fine. It's an idea, you can do anything you want to with it to some extent, you know, as far as I'm concerned. But it's about getting in the street and organizing. If it ain't do, if it ain't about doing that, ain't, you ain't stealing nothing because you ain't doing nothing. So yeah, this book's real important, and um, you get this book at P of L Press in uh, Denver, Colorado. And you can also <clears throat> order some directly from Lorenzo. Yeah. Um, email address is uh, organize o r g a n i z e period the period hood at gmail dot com, and you can. Uh, Send an email, and you'll get information about how you can order it. Fifteen bucks plus three dollars shipping. Uh, it is a it's, it's a fantastic book. You'll never you'll never see the ideas in this book in anywhere else. You know, it's a it's a completely original and unique book. Uh, you know, I, it's not because I'm some special person. Uh, in fact, it's because I'm an ordinary person. Have gone through what prisoners and what other poor people, people on the bottom, activists and all of them, have gone through all those experiences and have now been able to write about it and not in just talking about myself as an individual, but placing it in the context of a journal for revolutionary change, a, a book for revolutionary change, you know. And that's real important in this period because ain't nobody talking about that. You know, they talking about voting, and I'm running for office, and, and, and black folks need to vote their way to freedom, and black folks need to get jobs, and black folks need to, you know, get uh, businesses, get business loans from the government, and all this kind of stuff. They're talking about all that. And they, let me tell you something, there's a limited amount of money for that. There's a limited amount of money. They ain't giving that up to, to poor folks. You ain't getting out the ghetto uh, because of somebody going to give you no loan. That's a joke, and, uh, it's a, a, and the joke's on you. So uh, we need to organize and fight for what we need, the material resources and so forth we need. We got to fight for that, my friends, my brothers and sisters. They ain't giving nothing up. And so uh, it's real, real important. So that's what this book is about. How do we do that? How do we get organized? How do we build some stuff on the local level? What about these, these new ideas and stuff? What about these new groups and all this stuff? What are we going to do? Well, here's a chance for you to find out. Anarchism and the Black Revolution, you know, 
The Ideals of Black Autonomy. Read it. Get it. Implement it. 